Hello and welcome to Isinglass. Today we're going to take a look at the bogies from the Isinglass range. Not so much what the different types of bogies are, the ones that are available, but uh, the, what it is you need to do to assemble them, get them ready for use. So let's take a look at them. Okay, so let's have a look at how we assemble an Isinglass bogey. So the tools we're going to need are clippers, tweezers, a couple of files just to clean things up and we have here wasted bearings some people prefer the top hat bearings whichever one works for you okay so this is the bogey as it arrives as you can see we've got the extra bits in there we're going to have to remove those so you may find that when you clip things off they will go all over the place So just gently snip things away. And put all these bits to one side. So there we go, we've got the NEM fittings, the riser and the ABA adapter. Okay, and then we can use the file just to clean up the edges there. So it's quite easy to remove the material. So it's resin dust. Try not to breathe it in. Wear a mask or have an extractor fan handy. Okay. I'll clean this one up and then carry on in a moment. Okay, so there was a little bit of off-camera work. The bogey's been cleaned up. Also need to remove the uh, the support material from the brakes. So that's just there to help the, the printing process. There we go. As you can see, the cleaning up process often leaves a lot of dust that might need cleaning away before painting. Okay, so how do we fit the wheels? Okay, so how do we actually put the wheels into an Isinglass bogey? So they're made of resin, and one of the problems with resin is it can be brittle, but they're designed with a certain amount of flex. Obviously, there's some fragile parts on here. Have to be careful where we put our fingers and thumbs. Okay. So I find the essential tool is a pair of tweezers and I must admit I find it easier doing this with a with a magnifying glass normally rather than working around a camera so bear with me there could be some frustrating moments so the way I tend to do this is I'll get one bearing and insert it make sure it's flat now you might prefer to use a little dab of glue to hold them in Generally what I do is I'll get a set of wheels, put the one end in, and use that to hold the bearing in place, which on this occasion I don't think worked. That's still there. So insert the wheel, use it to hold that bearing in place. Turn the wheel upside down, grab another bearing. Now, sorry if you can't see this. But it's a finicky little task. Okay, so there, there's the bearing in place. So just flex the axle box out slightly. 
and there we go that's the bearings inserted so let's do the other set of wheels Insert the bearing. Insert one end of the wheels. I need to turn this so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so that bearing's in place. Another bearing. Make sure it's in place. And I'll see if I can do this one in front of the camera. Just flex the bearing out slightly. Flex the axle box out slightly. Whoops. It's still there. Flex the axle box out slightly and let it close on the bearing. And there we have one set of wheels. Not the best of layouts, I must admit. Okay, so we've assembled the bogey. We've the bearings, etc. Now we're going to try and fit the NEM socket. As we can see, we've got two ends to the bogey. One end is plain, which if you choose to have a different coupling, that's up to you, you can use that end. Or we have a slot that's going to need to be opened out for the NEM fitting. So, with the bogies, you'll get this little information sheet which shows you the specs for how high the NEM socket should be off the track. And I've supplied two different sockets, usefully numbered one and two, which give you slightly different heights. There we go, we see the number two is, uh, will be slightly closer to the track. All depends on the wheel size you're using. Okay, so taking the bogey, and let's start with the number one socket. Slide that into the slot. This is just for test fitting. You might need to clean the underside of the socket ever so slightly, just to get the fitting right. Okay, thus. Now, I suppose if we're testing the right height and we need it to be eight and a half millimeters to the top of the inside of the socket, we could try and use our trusty steel ruler. But that could be just a little bit awkward. So I've got, this is actually from Simoba, a test fitting device which rests on the track. And if I lift the track up with everything on it, we can see it doesn't quite slide straight on. There we go. But that's a pretty good height. Okay. Remove that now. There we go. So if we fitted that onto there, put the bogey on the track, let's pick the lot up again. We can see that clearly the number two socket is for a much higher ride height. And if we were actually to fit that, the socket would be 
too low for standards. Whereas we swap back to the number one socket. We can see that that's pretty much the right height. Right, so what next? So all we need is a dab of glue. And fix that in there. Now I'm not recommending any particular type of glue here. I use various different makes of super glues. I'm sure other adhesives will work just as well. As always, being very careful not to get this stuff on your fingers. Make sure the socket's facing downwards when you fit it. And we'll leave that to set just for a second. I never was very tidy with my glue. There we go, we can just ensure that we are getting it at exactly the right height whilst it's doing its setting. And there you have it. So I'm not going to insert a coupling just yet because I guess the glue is still probably a little bit tacky. But that is how to fit an Isinglass NEM socket onto an Isinglass bogey. Now if you prefer there's no reason you can't use other makes of NEM sockets. So I think these are, as you can see, some over. So we're taking a different bogey as a starting point. that should slot in there as well. So there's nothing to stop you using another manufacturer's components with Isinglass bogies. Now what we can do is find a coupling, insert that into the socket Isinglass bogey and with not very much room on our test track we can see that couples up nicely with a Hornby bogey So there you have it. Eisenhower's bogies are fairly easy to uh, remove the components, just snip them out, uh, pop the bearings in, ease the axles into the frame and they're ready to go. You can use any M fittings, either the ones I supply or the ones from other manufacturers. And they work with whatever other stock you've got on your, on your layout. So uh, now you may not have seen, I can actually provide cosmetic sides as well. So if you like using the MJT bogies, I can provide the sides in, in all the different types to uh, fit onto those. If you can't see it on my website, send me a message and I'll see what I can do for you. Thank you for watching. This is Andy from Isinglass. Goodbye.